19th time a Division I uh, game will take place at the Sanford Pentagon. An awesome place. Brad McCaffrey in his 11th season. His team was here several years ago. He said it was bonkers because it was so crowded with Iowa fans. He's done an amazing job. Let's look at the starting lineups for today's ball game. No surprises whatsoever. Jalen Suggs may have benefited the most with this layoff because that ankle that he injured uh, that Mark Few had to deal with in the West Virginia game is fully healed. And how about the job Mark's done? 22nd season with Gonzaga. And here we go. The Hawkeyes will control the tip. They've got the basketball to start things off. A little man-to-man -man action for Gonzaga to start things off. Garza way up top, and Luca Garza on the baseline has it knocked away momentarily, but he's so strong, Clark. Yeah, he's got great hands, too, and was able to retrieve that miss. It's going to be interesting. Does Gonzaga play him one-on-one -on -one throughout the game as they did there, or will they eventually look to double him and open up the three-point shots for the Hawkeyes? There's Bohannon leading the charge. Ball is knocked away by Suggs, and a foul is going to be called against the Hawkeyes. C.J. Frederick will be called for the game's first foul. Sug showing you some of that football anticipation and speed jumping into the passing lane there. And because he got there so early, that foul was called on Frederick. You know, folks that have watched him play this year uh, echo the same thing you just said. They said because he was such a good defensive back in football, he has great anticipation on the basketball court. And he plays with the intensity and fervor of a football player with Tim. basketball skills. Timmy double team momentarily and a traveling violation turnover against the Zags. We're excited about this matchup between Timmy and Luca Garza just because of the size and the ability of both of them. I agree wholeheartedly. That's one I've got isolated camera on. Luca Garza and Drew Timmy, both very skilled and active big guys. Another steal for the Zags. Here comes Sox. Has it knocked away off the leg of Iowa and out of bounds. I believe it's going to wind up being Gonzaga basketball. I think we may have foul. Did they call foul? Yeah, they I did, think, yep. I think so, Tom. They got Suggs um, on his way to the rack, and that's where Gonzaga likes to hurt you. If they get a stop, they rebound it cleanly, and a number of their guys can take it right off the board and start the break, or they move it with the pass very well up court. Zags is a team shooting 74% from the free throw line, and Suggs converts with his first one. Averaging 13 and a half points per game as a freshman. Recruited by Iowa to play football as well. He's a two sports star if he chose to be. 2 2 game. Three pointer. Short. I think you heard Frederick even yell short as the ball left his hands. Mm -hmm. The shooter knows exactly where it's headed when he lets it go. Watson cutting into the hoop, and he's blocked by the side of the rim. I think he was surprised he was that open. And Look at this guy. Steal by Look Suggs. at this guy. Well, he went along the sidelines. My goodness, does he make a play on the ball with that anticipation. Twice we've seen it now. I guess in football they call that closing speed, right, Big if you're top. a defensive back. And just wasn't able to keep it inbound. He had nine interceptions in high school. Two were pick sixes. Garza down low, working against Kisper. A little size mismatch. Three for Bohannon. A little too strong. And Ayayi with the rebound. Looks like Gonzaga going to mix it up, Tom, because that time they brought a double team from the weak side. And you see Ayayi loses it out of bounds. That's one of the areas that perhaps Mark Few was concerned about. How sharp will his team be from a timing and ball handling standpoint? And we've seen a couple of loose plays at the offensive end here early for the Zags. Great hands by Connor McCaffrey. That's not a three, that's a two. It's short, and Kispert with the board. Quiet start for both teams offensively. Kispert way downtown. It's good. <laughs> what a stroke. I mean, that stroke is so efficient in textbook. Over 1060 points during his college career. A 5-2 lead. Step back three is good as it rolls off the front of the rim by Connor McCaffrey. 39 consecutive starts for McCaffrey. Cut pass 
Watts inside and a foul call. I think they got Watson for that foul, Tom. Didn't quite make his cut hard enough to get in front of McCaffrey and then collided with him. Good idea here, but there you see you got him with the left arm at the end of that play. By the way, I got to uh, correct myself. It was Wieskamp who had the three, not McCaffrey. Mm -hmm. They shoot so well from beyond the arc. Anybody can can hit it any time. Well, they made 12 of them a game so far, and they shoot it right around 40 percent. So they are lethal from behind that three point line. All right, so they're going to take a look at this to see if it was intentional or not. I thought it was a common foul. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I don't think there's anything beyond just a common foul. Unfortunate shot to the face for McCaffrey, but nothing more than that. It's Watson who they're looking at. Yeah, he was. That's just a natural motion as he was trying to make his cut. Unintentional and unfortunate, <laughs> but not flagrant. Yeah, so the officials are going to call this a common foul. So 5-5 five, five game, two fouls for Iowa, one for Gonzaga to start this ball game. And Watson will take a seat. Yeah, one of the other things to keep an eye on, Tom, Gonzaga only plays seven guys in Iowa. Frank McCaffrey told us he's comfortable playing up to 11 guys, but most likely will stay with his nine-man rotation is Frederick. Also a tremendous perimeter shooter gets one to go there for Iowa. Yeah, Frederick with a soft touch. He averages nine and a half per game. All Big Ten freshman team. It is pretty remarkable watching Iowa play this year and scoring as many points as the Hawkeyes are scoring. Well, they play at a fast pace. They've got a really balanced attack, and that guy makes it easy for everybody. Absolutely. Because if you play him one-on-one, -on -one, he's got a variety of moves he can go to inside. And this team is so unselfish. as sucks. Comes right back with a triple. We're expecting that this is going to be a high scoring game, even with the layoff for Gonzaga. Well, we know the shot clock won't be through. No. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> Suggs pulls down the easy rebound off the miss by Wieskamp. Suggs lost control, but Ayadi is there to touch it off the glass. One point lead for the Zags. will hit a three from time to time. He's over 60% from beyond the arc. Inside for Wieskamp. Turnaround jumper. That is a pretty shot. He is a terrific all-around player, especially offensively. Showing you his mid-range game, his three game. He can put it on the floor and drive it as well. 81 points away from 1,000. Suggs, that was almost like the play that he got hurt on in the West Virginia game. Timmy doesn't get it to roll. Camp open for a moment. CJ Frederick for three. He's getting to go. Boy, they've got so many weapons on that perimeter. And the spacing is outstanding. It makes it really hard to recover on those three-point shooters. So you've got to do a good job defending the ball if you're Gonzaga. So you don't have those pseudo-penetration opportunities created. There's Tibby. That's the one part of his game that he's improved on from last year to this year. The ability to score anywhere inside the paint with those uh, soft hands. Yeah, he's got really good feet, too. Very light-footed and nimble. And there's guards are doing what he does. Unlucky on the bounce there, but he does a great job finding angles where there appear to be no angles. Suggs, long-range three. It's good. Bangs another one. <laughs> You know, the Zags have struggled shooting the three in the first three games they've played, but they've got quality three-point shooters. And I've often said, you go with the percentages, even though they're only at 29 thus far, they're a much better shooting team than that from three. And today would be the day yes. to break out of it. Suggs, two for six from beyond the arc coming into this ball game, but Clark, he's coming alive. Yes, he is, knocking down the triple here. You gotta get your hand up quicker than that if you're gonna deal with Jalen Suggs.
This is very emotional when I saw them for the first time. Friends, parents, not only are cancer survivors, but uh, he also, his son Patrick McCaffrey, uh, who is on the bench wearing number 22, is a cancer survivor. Uh, and that, actually, there's Patrick now getting a chance to play. Mm -hmm. Had thyroid cancer several years ago. Where's number 22 in honor of his buddy Austin Flash Schroeder, who passed away at the age of 15. And Mark Few said that he and his wife Marcy have done so much work with Coaches versus Cancer. He embraced the opportunity to support Fran McCaffrey in the program by wearing the sneakers today. Yeah, these two coaches are two of many mm. across college basketball have done just phenomenal work in supporting the American Cancer Society, raising awareness and funds to fight that terrible disease. Guards a double team down low, so they go back up top, no good. Rebound underneath by Nunji. And Nunji will be fouled and go to the free throw line. There's Margaret McCaffrey, who's on the board of the American Cancer Society. He was a pretty good basketball player in her mm -hmm. own right at Notre Dame. Yes, he was. Fran said, uh, being a coach's wife is not as difficult as being uh, a player's <laughs> mom. Yeah, yeah. And he's got two of them. Yep. They're two sons. It was funny. We had our conversation with him earlier this week, and he just talked about sometimes how Margaret may not be happy with what Dad is doing as it relates to playing so time. Great. For her guys, obviously mothers are nurturing and desire that um, their kids are feeling and doing well. And Dad has a coach, but he said he he loves coaching his boys and having them around and being part of uh, this experience. For him. So they play it straight too. They don't give him a hard time most times. Three-pointer for the sideline is good. Nemhart has been such a huge boost for Gonzaga since transferring from Florida. I think he's their most indispensable player, Tom. I really do. Because he's tough, he's strong, he's got size as a point guard. He can play with the ball or without it. Uh, his demeanor and disposition fits perfectly with this squad. And when Suggs went down in that game against West Virginia for a little bit, Nimhard was the guy who kept Gonzaga tight and then ultimately helped them pull away. Inside, Nunji is able to lay it in after the drive from Wieskamp. Yeah, Mark Few told us uh, before the Ballard game was postponed, he said, if we didn't have Nimhard, we would not have beaten West Virginia. Mm -hmm. They go inside, Ayayi trying to kiss it off the glass in the rim, no good. All right, so the 8-0 run was answered by Iowa, and now a two-point game. Okay. Toussaint, a little dribbling display inside. And here comes the senior Aaron Cook. Oh, nice look. Yeah. Beautiful. And Bala, who has really come on, got his body in better shape. They call him Baby Shaq, is able to lay that one off the glass. And there's that W you talked about, Clark, the different ways they're going after. Yeah, they're Anderson. mixing it up too, Tom. They're not doubling him every time. And there you see a nice job by Nunji, who gives them tremendous punch off the bench. Averaging 11 points a game and half a dozen rebounds as well. Little zone by Iowa? Yep, they're mixing it up as well. Ball off from the baseline. How about that? Big fella. That little short corner against yeah. the zone will be available. You just got to be efficient and tight with your passes, and then when you catch it, you've got to be ready to shoot it. Speaking of ready to shoot it, Iowa's ready to shoot it at any time. Both of these teams are. I mean, these two teams are two of my top spurt ability teams in the country. Like Creighton, Creighton would be in that neighborhood, as well as Villanova and Michigan State. But these two are at the top of the heap when you talk about scoring runs and high octane offense coming at you in bunches. Well, Kispert right on cue, a little catch and shoot quickly. But it's a five point game. Luka Garza with a two handed jam. And a timeout on the floor with 10.36 to play here in the first half. It's 25 22. Luka Garza doing what he's been doing to everybody all season. Spots. <laughs> but he talks about balance and peace. Yeah. And it's part of the reason why he's been at Gonzaga for so long. Because there's so much that he's been able to accomplish that he may not be able to accomplish at other places. I thought this was really cool, Clark. When yeah. he ran through his progression as a head coach 
from one year to the next. Yeah, really contextual timeline as he's grown into one of the top programs. He's grown the Gonzaga Bulldogs into one of the top programs in the country for the last dozen years or so. And look at that progression. And have fun is really the one that he would bullet and highlight. Yep. And in part, that's why he's still there because he has great fun doing what he's doing where he is. And oftentimes, Tom, it's about comfort, confidence, and fit when you're talking about where you want to spend your time doing what you're doing. Uh, he's outstanding, loves what he's doing, and loves this group that he's coaching. Yeah, a lot of people around the country don't always buy into that, and he certainly has. There's Nunji cutting through the paint. How fluid was that? These are two really, really outstanding offensive teams. Now, I know both are knocked as far as what they don't do defensively. And clearly, if they're either is going to win a championship, the defense does have to get better. But I think the high octane offense will allow you to be reasonably okay most of the time defensively. But there are times when your defense is going to have to rise up. And I think both of these teams will have the ability to do that. And Nunji misses the three. Timmy with the rebounds. And here you talk. I talk about raking it and taking it. Timmy, your center, able to get it up and get it all. Oh, almost an excellent pick and roll option. Mm -hmm. Longest active streaks ranked in the AP poll, Gonzaga at 82 weeks. First time, though, Clark, that they're ranked number one to start the season, a spot that they continue to sit at. Yeah, and I think part of that is fueling them in this matchup today despite the layoff. Now, they've been a little sloppy with the ball on a couple of occasions. That's the only evidence I see of Mark Few's concern about not having played a game in a couple of weeks. Just a little loose with the ball. And there, a foul called on Wies camp with Timmy cutting to the basket. Yeah, the fatigue element doesn't seem to be showing up. Gonzaga looks fit, and there you see right there. Nice step through try by Timmy, and clearly Wies camp committed the foul. But again, attacking and putting pressure on that defense in transition is what Gonzaga likes to do. Three fouls apiece. Timmy inside against Nunji. That's a tough shot. Yeah, well, off, he was off balance there. Forced to bat. And now five on four. Ivan trying to take advantage and unable to do so with the initial shot. Keegan Murray comes up a little short. Here comes Suggs. He's already made a couple of threes. Little hesitation and crossover. Gets the basketball back. He is destined to try to get that ball into the bucket. <laughs> And determined and got it done. Yeah, he's going to get a couple free throws, but foul on CJ Frederick. Fran uh, didn't think that there was a foul underneath. Well, that was just a case of Suggs forcing the contact, as you said. He was just bound and determined to get something up on the rim. Clark, were you like everybody else around the country when you saw Suggs get hurt and thinking that it might have been worse than it was? Well, I always want to give the player the benefit of the doubt. So I tend to go the other way. When a guy goes down, uh, yeah, I do. I mean, to your question, yeah, I thought it was worth, much worse than it was, quite honestly, because there wasn't a ton of contact. Right. And anytime you see a guy go down without a ton of contact, that raises your antenna about how serious it might be. What did Mark Few tell us? He said later on in the game, he said, then he's limping on the floor and he's pulling a Willis Reed. And I said, hey, listen, if you're limping, you're not going to stay in this ball game. <laughs> There's a foul on the floor. Well, credit that young man. He returned and kind of worked through it the last several minutes that he played and made some big plays in that game down the stretch. Connor McCaffrey cutting the basket. The foul is on Watson. Is that his? That's his second. Second, okay. Yes, yeah, so he'll check out. Luca Garza checks back in for Iowa. Well, this is something to keep an eye on. Iowa again with that depth that Fran McCaffrey so likes. Nobody's averaging over 25 minutes a game to this point. You just think in a game where you figure it to be close and fast paced, will that depth pay dividends in the second half sometime? Off balance shot by Murray. And Suggs has it blocked away on the opposite ends. So step back three is good, and it's his third three. He just sized him up. That was Nunji out there in a cross match. 
And Suggs knew he could drive him or get the shot he wanted. Nunji trying to answer and is unable to do so. Iowa scoreless the last two minutes plus. Nemhart running the length of the floor and a timeout called by Iowa after he's able to lay it in. It's an 8-0 run for the Zags. Spurtability on display. That was one of Fran McCaffrey's biggest concerns. How do we handle them in transition? Suggs, one-on-one. -on -one. No match if you're too big and not going to get a hand up. And then in transition, Nimhard. Zags by nine. 33 to 24, six of eight from beyond the arc. Jalen Suggs has three of those threes so far, Clark. Yeah, he's been terrific. And the Zags only average five three-point makes a game coming into this particular game. But Suggs has been the catalyst, taking advantage of what the defense gives him. If they're not up tight, he's going to let it fly. And he's been very effective and efficient with it. And here he's got a bigger guy on him who's backing up, respecting the drive. That leaves him open for the three. But the Zags already surpassing what they've averaged in three-point field goal makes to this point in the first half. Yeah, I don't know yeah. about the, the anticipation of whether they're rusty or not. They don't seem to be. There's Jalen's dad, Larry, who's coached him in youth sports uh, since he was a tyke. In fact, he remembers when he was 10 years old. His dad said that his hips and his memory is what stood out on the football field, the way he could move yeah. and remember plays. There you go. Those are two nice attributes to have. Swift hits and a good hard drive. See the scoring drop for the Hawkeyes. Guards have set the high screen, bumped inside. Whistle blows and a foul call. There'll be a foul on Gonzaga. With 7.23 to play. Julian Strother in the game for the first time called for that foul for the Zags. Garza double teamed. Ayayi came over to help out. Mm -hmm. Gives it off to Nunji, which he's so good at. He can find the open man, and the shot is no good. Yeah, that was good execution out of the double team by Garza. But here they come in transition. Nemhard short. But that's what Gonzaga likes to do. They like to quick hit you when they get the defensive rebound. Tough match up here. Yeah. Garza, there's help from Tindy. Plenty of time on the shot clock for the Hawkeyes. There you are. Yeah, traveling violation. That's the fourth turnover. For Iowa. Both of these teams do a really nice job of taking care of the ball. Gonzaga's had a couple of miscues just with loose balls heading on the offensive end, but there you see it. Just nine turnovers between them thus far. Kispert picked up by Garza, speeds right past him and lays it in. And you can attack Luca Garza in the pick and roll situation, especially if you make him switch onto a smaller, more agile player. And Kispert took full advantage. Lungi looking in for Garzi's double team, so that seems to be the objective at least right now. Skip pass to the corner, three is no good, and the drought is a little more than three and a half minutes for the Hawkeyes. Suggs for three again, yes! Well, look how quick they get it up and down the court, though. And there's Larry expecting it. That's no right. reaction. <laughs> That's what I coached him to do. And Garza was able to slice through the defense and end the scoring drop for Iowa. Whistle blows. Foul is called against the Zags. Another one from Suggs. Has he got four threes knocked down now? Suggs has four threes. Yeah. And they've all been kind of rhythm threes for him. No real duress. He's recognized that defenders are backing off, and he's letting it fly. I love the fact that both of these coaches just fuel their teams with great confidence. They just play. Play freely, play confidently. And Nunji a little too strong with that two-point field goal attempt. Dominic Harris, the freshman, with the rebound. He's in the game for the first time. So Gonzaga is going a little deeper on their bench today. And Mark Few told us he likes his freshman and wants to find more playing time, obviously, in this disjointed season that we're undergoing in college basketball. Practice time is all over the place, if, in fact, you even have a chance to practice. But he thinks those freshmen are both going to be integral parts of Gonzaga's team as we move 
further into the season. So Nunji to the free throw line off the foul from Suggs. Front of the 1 1 is good. Tuesday at 9 Eastern on CBS Sports Network, catch the 18th ranked San Diego State Aztecs as they battle St. Mary's on the 24 hour home of CBS Sports. BYU with a big win yesterday against San Diego State. Very impressive win. They controlled that pretty much from start to finish. Yeah, Mitchell made it a two point game with about two and a half minutes left, but mm -hmm. then that was it. Yeah, he, all, he had a three that he took that would have given San Diego State the lead, but. BYU did a nice job closing it out. Good hands here by Iowa in that zone defense. Active hands forcing the turnover. Now see if they can convert. Gonzaga in man-to-man -man defense. Seven turnovers now for the Zags. Nunji inside. Luka Garza didn't have the angle. Whistle blows and a foul underneath. I think Nunji came in and got Suggs with the lower forearm there going after that rebound. Good move there by Garza and just overshot it. And there you see the nudge by Nun G. And the foul was committed on Suggs. And Suggs took a little bit of a fall there. You know, there's a lot of hand fighting, Tom, that goes on inside when you're trying to corral rebounds. But you don't have to bump a guy much to gain a significant advantage. And that's why Nun G was whistled for the foul. There. Did you like the battle? Oh, I loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. As much as I can remember of it, you know, it's, <laughs> it's starting to fade from my rearview mirror now. Start writing stuff it's, down. Yeah, it's starting <laughs> to fade from my rearview mirror. But every now and then, my memory is jarred about how much fun it was to get in there and get a missed shot and demoralize the opposition when you put it back in the hoop. Here's Kispert for three off the pass from Ayayi. No good. Timmy with the rebound, and Timmy right back up and doesn't get the roll, but he tries again, and this time gets it to go. It's a 13-point game. Garza trying to answer immediately. A little spin move is good. Well, he's relentless. Great job of rim running there. And his teammates do a nice job getting him that ball on time and on target. Speaking of fresh feet, that went off the mark, but it was an open look for Dominic Harris. Loose ball, Ayayi tips it into the hands Watch of Kispert. Yeah, Watch here out. goes Nemar, right on the floor and laying it in. They are so, so good in Kansas, in part because they cleanly rebound, and then everybody gets their head up immediately. And guys really run, run with purpose, they run wide. And the Zags don't look too rusty to me, partner, mm -hmm. plus 13. Four, yes, the sir. The They're in the hunt. Great to be talking about them this late in the season. See the playoff berths have been clinched. Kansas City and Pittsburgh. Speaking of football, Jalen Suggs not only was an outstanding quarterback, recruited by Iowa, Iowa State, Clark's Ohio State Buckeyes. Also took his temperature for football. He decided to play basketball. A little high-low action with Garza and McCaffrey. And Garza to the free throw line. How tough has it been for uh, Garza today? He has 10, but how tough has it been with what the Zags are doing? Well, he's such a good offensive player, and his teammates do a great job of playing through him and to him. He's had to work, but he's a relentless worker, so he doesn't mind. As a matter of fact, he's, some, he's kind of like a football running back, you know, that gets stronger as the game goes on because of his great work ethic. So Gonzaga wants to continue to make him work. They've shown him different looks. They've doubled him from the weak side, from the top side. But he's going to get his numbers. You just don't want him to dominate you and then create easy opportunities for his opponent. So I like the for his teammates. So I like what Gonzaga has done in mixing defenses. And Gonzaga's start of its defense is this side of the ball. The offensive end, and you can't turn it over if you're Gonzaga. But the offense is 25 to 30 percent of Gonzaga's defense in my mind. Here's Suggs through the lane, has it knocked away, still loose, and he'll just squirt it out to Kisper. Look at the spacing and movement. Yeah, an open three, and it's good. And that's a cook. Wow. And that's after Suggs is in there scratching and fighting for a ball. And that's the only place where I've seen Gonzaga be a little bit untidy. And you can see that in terms of some of the ball handling 
miscues they've had, but they haven't been costly because they've been efficient most of the time. Yeah, because of COVID-19 protocol, the Zags didn't really have a full team practice until the middle of this week. And that's why Mark Few was a little concerned about timing and rhythm, and they're in rhythm right now. But you noticed in our conversation with him, I said, you've got a competitive bunch yes. that loves to play. He said, Clark, I'm hoping that's going to be what carries us today. And so far, these guys are having fun because it's been a pickup game. And everybody wants to play a pickup game. Nine threes for the Zags. Timeout for Iowa. If you thought you saw the last of double cheeseburger pizza, think again. Because it's back at Papa John's again. Get a large double cheeseburger pizza for just 12 bucks. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. I got to work late. Don't know. I'll try not to wake you. Bye. Let's do this. Forty-eight, thirty-one. Gonzaga on top of Iowa with two seventeen to play here in the first half. Coming up on AT and T at the half, Adam Zucker and Seth Davis break down our first half and bring you highlights of the other big games in action. That's coming up on AT and T at the half. Busy day for college basketball. And a busy day on CBS as well. This is just the start. We've got two more basketball games coming up and then the SEC championship. And Fran McCaffrey calling that timeout, Clark, because his team right now down by 17. They've got to stabilize things. They do, and they need to do it offensively. They've got to get scores so that they can at least have a chance to get the defense set against um, Gonzaga's lethal back. Right there you go. That's part of it. Run good offense, score the ball. Now, you can get back and make Gonzaga play more in the half court. First bucket for Connor McCaffrey. Suggs with 15 points. Trying another three. Gets oh, another man. three. Oh, Suggs goodness. now. Five for six from beyond the arc. Wow. That's 10 threes in this first half. For and the we Zags. said it a moment ago, they've averaged only five makes per game in the first three games. And it looks like Toussaint. Got loose with that chicken wing on the push off. And Gonzaga goes the other way. And right now, Iowa has to regain its composure for this next 92 seconds. But it's hard to do that when you're not scoring. And nope. the other team is running it down your throat and then making threes at a very, very high rate. Suggs wants the high screen. Working against Toussaint. Whistle blows and a blocking foul going to be called against Paulo. Yeah. Anytime you extend that hip, that's an easy one for the official. I mean, that's a textbook. That's textbook in how you shouldn't set a screen, basically. The Sanford Pentagon, which has hosted now the number one men's team and the number one women's team this year. How about that? Looks like a phenomenal facility. Got a chance to get a virtual tour of it. Great basketball venue. There's Garza taking advantage of that one on one there. 14 points now for Luca Garza, so he has 14 of the 35. Under a minute to play in the first half. Well, oh, that's a tough pass spinning off the hands of Ballo. He probably should have corralled it though. Well, you made two really good points. It was catchable, mm -hmm. but it was a tough one. And for a big guy, uh, it even becomes a little more difficult. Ballo will take his seat. He led his country, Molly, to uh, the under-19 championship this past offseason. Lost to the United States, the farthest his country's ever gone at a tournament of that stature. 35 seconds left to play in the first half. Now that is a tough, tough shot. So, Bohannon? I thought that was Bohannon. It Maybe. sucks. Took something in the face off that shot. Yeah, it's Bohannon. Yep, Jordan Bohannon mm -hmm. into the paint. Yeah, good aggressive take that time. And now Iowa down 14. 
much like Gonzaga, this team has tremendous capacity to come back. Obviously, we're headed towards the end of the half, but the stop here, we'd have to feel okay about where they are coming into the second half. Yeah, I was three for its last three scoring, and That's with under foul. 10 seconds Toussaint. left, a blocking foul is called on Joe Toussaint. I think he was in good position had he not reached in. Well, that means Suggs, who already has a game high 18, will revisit the free throw line. This young man's had some special games already. I mean, the game against Kansas was phenomenal. This game, I think we're seeing his athleticism yeah. big time in the first half. Yeah, very similar to what he showed, the explosiveness, the uh, high motor, the tremendous skill. All on display. The three-point shooting has been phenomenal. Look at Ayahi find a way. He's a sneaky rebounder. This and could be hurtful. Yeah, he found Kispert as the clock winds. Two seconds left. Garza's got it. And that is it. The end of the first half. The Zags 51-37 over the number three team in the country. That's the end of the first half. Gonzaga up big. Now, let's send it to Adam Zucker in New York. 37. Well, Mark Few wondered what his team would be like coming into this ball game. He hoped they would be athletic and just freewheeling. Well, they're freewheeling, all right. They definitely are freewheeling. And I tell you what, the fact that they've been able to overcome 10 turnovers, primarily because of the great three-point shooting. They've gotten quality looks. They've been excellent in transition. And they've done a good job on the defensive right. glass, which has ignited the fast break opportunity. Well, you're talking about three-pointers. I mean, the three-points uh, have been phenomenal for them. They have 10 threes so far. Jalen Suggs has been leading the way. He had two coming into this ball game. Well, Gonzaga only makes five a game coming into this ball game and made 10. But again, quality looks. Iowa late tagging the shooters and Jalen Suggs with 18 points able to step into him. And there's Nimhard knocking him down. So the Zags did a great job cashing in from the three point line. And Seth Davis talked about it at halftime. Iowa has the capability. I mean, coming into this game, they've averaged making 12 threes a game, 40 percent shooting. So clearly that's that'll have to be part of the recipe in this second half. They've got to knock some down from on the perimeter. Garza's is getting it done inside, but Gonzaga doing a nice job, I think, of making him work for his points and still defending the three point line pretty well. Iowa has missed its last five three pointers. That's kind of the struggles that we've seen from them uh, in this game so far. Yeah. Luca Garza, who's leading the way for the Hawkeyes. 14 points. Suggs has 18 for the Zags. Kispert has been really good, too. He has 11. And Gonzaga with the basketball to start the second half from the Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. A beautiful venue. Nine basketball courts in all. This, of course, is the main one. going right to work switching sides of the lane and Garza a little misdirection and the rebound I think Iowa wanted a three there they probably still do I thought Bohannon had yeah. one that he passed up Bohannon with the basketball Watson with a couple of fouls is on him and Suggs with the steal and the foul at midcourt against McCaffrey all right, so Luca Garza, he got his numbers in the first half. He worked hard. He really did. And you see Gonzaga showing a bit of a double team late there. Here he's able to get behind the defender in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Again, the double comes, but not really aggressive and well too late. Garza's so good at sealing his defender and getting deep real estate in the paint. Watson all alone underneath. Can't finish. And Garza with the second rebound of this half. I think the Hawkeyes are going to have to try to get some stuff in transition when it avails itself. Because these guys are definitely going to do transition action. Yeah, they average over 25 points per game in transition buckets. That's their 13th of this ball game. Yeah, 13 to 4 fast break points in addition to the advantage at the three-point line. Garza's triple team that he's fouled from behind. He's going to get a couple free throws. I think that's Watson, Tom, that picked up the foul there. That would be his third. 
And I thought Mark Few got some decent minutes from his young freshman, Dominic Harris and Julian Swarthy. He told us earlier this week that he's anticipating both of those guys with time. They've mm -hmm. not had a ton of practice time, even um, during during the season or preseason. But he feels like they can add some nice pieces in expanding his bench. He's also going to get a nice piece beginning Monday. <laughs> ben Gregg, six foot ten inch reclassified freshman from the state of Washington, is going to join the Zags. 53 37. 18 and a half to play. Whistle blows and an illegal screen called against the Zags. Wow, and I think it's Watson again. Our recess game stats. Right, so Clark, you talked about the three-point shooting. Yeah, if I had a telestrator, I'd be um, highlighting that 10 of 16 to 2 of 10, plus 9 on the boards, mm -hmm. and then plus 9 actually, well, plus 7 at halftime, but plus 9 now in fast break points. So you turn it over a little bit, which the Zags have done, but you can negate that with three-point makes and fast break points. Iowa looking for a three. They get a three. Well, the Hawkeyes really needed that. And Suggs with the answer and a pretty finish. That turned out to be a little easy after he split the defense. Yeah, well, yeah it was quite easy. Garza double team got loose as he knifes his way through. He had Nemhart and Suggs on a little size advantage. And he's just so strong and poised in there. You never see him really rush. Yeah, you, because he's so strong. And you alluded to the work ethic. There's, you'd be hard pressed to find somebody with the kind of work ethic he has. And Suggs connects again. That's six threes. And they're just executing so well when they squeeze that orange, which they've done most of the time. Good double there. And then a good recovery by Yayu. Wow. Frederick baseline jumper no good. Ball is loose. It's still loose. Wieskamp runs it down. Three from the outside is no good, and the rebound by Nemhard. And again, no need for an outlet pass with just about any of the Zags. All of them, the guys on the floor, currently, when they rebound it, they can start the break themselves. And here's Suggs, just seeing what the defense gives on the pick and roll situation, and then here's a warm up jumper. <laughs> That is a good way of putting it. Wide open yep. warm-up jumper. He's one away from his season high. He likes national TV. He sure does. The slip pass inside to Ayayi, and he's able to lay it in. How about 23 points, five assists, four rebounds. Can you say stat sheet stuffer supreme? Sheet stuffer. Wieskamp with the answer in the three. And this is where Iowa has to find a way to offer some resistance defensively. Again, you don't have to be great all the time defensively when you've got offense like these te two teams have. But there are periods in games where you have to stiffen up. Like right there, Timmy yeah. was left wide open yeah. in front of the free throw line. Exactly. They go inside to Garza. A little help defense by Nemhard. He's trying to trying force something out. there. Yeah. Yeah, he overdid it there. He should have passed that ball out. You don't have your initial move to beat the double team. You can maybe give it one more pause, but after that, you got to get rid of it. Suggs is going to visit the free throw line off that pass from Timmy. Uh, the foul against the Hawkeyes. That'll be the third foul on McCaffrey. You know, I made the point in the first half that Gonzaga's offense is probably 25% of its defense, meaning because they're so good offensively and when they execute, it gives the defense a chance to set up. The same with the Hawkeyes. And that last play was an example of the offense creating a tough situation for Iowa defensively. The force through the double team, the turnover, and now you're in a broken floor situation, cross match, and end up committing a foul and giving the Zags an opportunity to extend the lead from the free throw line. 24 for Suggs as he misses the second shot. You saw Patrick McCaffrey come in for his brother Connor. Free throw line jumper for Wieskamp is good. Just spinning around, finding some openings. 
Kispert, Timmy, high post against Garza. Turn. Yeah, he can't play behind him. I mean, it's much the same with Garza. I mean, you can't play behind a guy with his skill. Too easy. Yeah, he used the pandemic, played a lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball with his dad. His dad, Matt, and his brother, Walker. 65-47, Jalen Suggs liking the spotlights for the Zacks. And celebrate, this is it. Join Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood as they take requests and play their holiday favorites. Garth and Trisha live tomorrow on CBS. We mentioned that each team, aside from their normal traveling party, has allowed 80 friends and family members to be in the building, a building that holds a little over 3,000. Garza was looked at just for a moment uh, during the timeout by the athletic trainer. He's fine. He is a workhorse. There's no doubt about that. Without a question, without doubt. I mean, he, uh, he's relentless. And it's all his preparation and mindset during the offseason, how he approaches every practice. And he needs some help from his teammates here. But the perimeter of Gonzaga is pretty good sized and athletic. And they're making it tougher for the complimentary guys for Iowa, the perimeter guys to shake free. Look at the kids out there, yep. the rotation. And they're willing. We talked to Mark Few during the week, and he said, it's a kind of pick your poison. Are you going to play guards a solo and let him go crazy or and not give up the threes? And they've done a nice job of blending both. They've actually done a really good job of not allowing a lot of quality perimeter looks because of that overall athleticism the Zags have on the perimeter. I mean, Ayayi is terrific. Nimhard is solid defensively. Suggs, we saw him at the very beginning of the game. No doubt. Show you that closing, anticipating speed to get into the passing lanes. Two free throws for Garza. Kispert, by the way, has uh, three personal fouls for Gonzaga, if there is a concern at all. As we head toward the 15-minute mark here in the second half. A little pressure, pressure by yeah. Iowa. Trying to disrupt things a bit. Boy, you can open yourself up with this kind of explosive offensive team, although. Oh, man. Tibby, the locks in. How about that? That's a, a share in the basketball from one big man to another. Yeah, right now, it's um, Iowa just doesn't have any answers defensively. 67-49, the Zags on top. McCaffrey, pull-up jumper, no good. Off the fingertips of Garza, but he gets it back, and he leaves it for Wieskamp. Uh, another three for Iowa, no good, and the rebound by Nemhard. Cook, he made one in the first half. Ayayi with the offensive rebound, and he tries to sweep in the putback, no good. Uh, that's going to be Iowa basketball. Mark View told us Ayayi is a very sneaky offensive rebounder. You know, he leads the team in rebound. He averages almost eight rebounds a game, and we've seen why today. He's got mm. a couple of those sneaky offensive rebounds. He has a nose for the ball. Talked about his athleticism earlier, but I'll tell you what, if a two-plus-week break from games is going <laughs> to produce this kind of effort, Mark might want to shut it down for another week and a half. And we talked to him about it. You asked him, you asked him, you know, is it the same as starting the season? And he said, well, at least starting the season, we were working out every single day. We were getting practice in. He said, I've had to go over our inbounds plays again yeah. these yeah. last couple of days. Well, so far, it's been a, been a positive restart for the Zags. But I felt they would be chomping yeah, at did. the bit said to that during play. The They've got such competitive spirit, and they're a veteran team, an experienced team. They're a hungry team. They're unselfish, and those things lend well to showing up, even on short preparation to play. And the style that Iowa plays feeds into that, Tom, because both of these teams are really high-level pickup basketball teams. That's how they play. So if you've got a smart, skilled team, there's no better landscape to do your thing in than this kind of this kind of landscape. The ball off the leg of Nemhart. He'll get a steal. He'll head to the basket. Leaves it inside. And the easy lane for Aaron Cook. It's a 20-point game. And Toussaint foul going up. We'll get a couple free throws for the Hawkeyes. 13-24 to play. That's four fouls on Watson. What the Zags do so well. Turn missed shots or mistakes into points rapidly. 
So Watson with number four. Free throw is good for Joe Toussaint, the sophomore. Started 20 games last year at the point guard position. Well, if you're Iowa, if you can find some way to create a few stops in succession, you know you've got enough offensive firepower, but you need to create some stops so you can dig into this deficit. Cook leaves it for Timmy, and Timmy goes right to the basket and is fouled by Garza. And we'll get two free throws. Nice job that time by Timmy to go right into the space. He didn't allow Garza to back off of him. He went right seeking his body to get into a shot to score or draw the foul. Timmy from the line this year, 73% missed that one. Think about this Gonzaga team and the star power that they have. Yeah. Well, much like Garza, although Baylor is very impressive. Uh, uh, I hope we get a chance to see Baylor and Gonzaga re-tee it and after the game was canceled a couple of weeks ago. Baylor is the only other team that I've seen, and I've not seen everybody that could perhaps uh, match up with Gonzaga because of that tremendous quartet yes. of perimeter players that Baylor has. Nemhart spin move reverses his field. I get the here. rebound. And Suggs under the basket. And his shot is blocked away. Gets it back. And it's kicked out of bounds by Suggs. And you know, there wasn't a basket there, but there was a lot of pretty cool movement under the hoop, wasn't there? <laughs> yeah, there was good activity. Yeah, good activity. It didn't lead to anything. Nothing. No, no fruit. <laughs> no fruit. But a lot of tilling of the soil that time. 72 54 to Sot. High off the glass. He's had a couple of nice moves to get to the bucket. Well, he's a creator. He can get into that lane. Powerful build and very aggressive minded. Ayayi for three. Short. Timmy with the rebound. Timmy goes right back up over the top of Garza. Well, we wondered about conditioning. What did, what did Mark Few say? He said, I'm concerned about conditioning and timing. I don't think conditioning's been an issue, and timing certainly hasn't either. Nope. McCaffrey trying to penetrate as the ball knocked away, out of bounds with the remain Iowa basketball. The 11:57 to play here in the second half. The number one team in the country has been well, just that today. The best. Let's take a look at the fast analysis presented by AT&T 5G. We talked about the Gonzaga Bulldogs' ability to hurt you in transition. Spacing, attack, find the best good shot, and then knock it down. Here you go, defensive stop, rebound, hey, push what? your head, run the lanes, lay up. Fast break points, clearly an advantage of Gonzaga. Everybody can handle and pass, catch and finish. Puts a lot of pressure on the opposing defense. You know, Clark, one of the great quotes that Mark Few had when we were talking to him, he said, I always wanted to play free and fast. I remember telling myself as an assistant while watching a game when I was, when our team was just plodding along, <laughs> that I want our guys to play with great confidence and have no worry about being taken out. Playing with great confidence can change how you look as a program. That's well said, and they've certainly Executed on that front. Nice move there by Garza. Luca shoehorning along that baseline. Now can the Hawkeyes, we've talked about it throughout this half, can they put together successive, successive stops? There's one. Yep. Run the floor. Frederick going right to the rim. Blocked away into the hands of Ayayi. Well, you got to finish there. That was a three-on-one break, and he made the wrong choice. That ball pinned up against the the glass. It was Suggs who blocked that shot at the other end. Sweeping pass inside to Ayayi. That ball hit off Garza and I thought hit the bottom of the backboard. Yeah, it did. I think it belongs to Gonzaga. But good pressure here. Nice trap. Actually, that should have been passed ahead. And Frederick elected to keep it. He had McCaffrey in front of the pack. And what a play by Suggs. Taking advantage of the poor decision by Frederick. Nemhart dribbles in, goes to Suggs from the corner. A little too strong. Ayayi with the rebound. And he's found going up. I thought he may have traveled a little bit. I well, had a nice little, that was a legal step there, a little jump stop step. But man, he has been a demon on the glass. 
absolutely a glass eater. How many offensive rebounds that is, is that? 11 for? offensive rebounds overall. For Gonzaga, he's got to yeah. have four or five of them. He does. He has five. He makes the free throw. He had 21 against West Virginia in that game where Suggs got hurt. Yeah. He's just such a good all-around player. And he's a perfect, perfect fourth option. He seems like he can do so much more. Ask Mark about that earlier. Yes, in the week. he did. But he's just content to do his job, to star in his role. When he's called upon to take more shots, he does. But defensively and on the glass from the guard position, Boy, he does an outstanding job. Hassan weaves through the defense, and he's going to get to the free throw line. He's been aggressive in the second been. half. He really has been, and they've needed his aggressiveness because, again, the perimeter shots haven't been nearly as available because of um, Gonzaga's defense. So when you're being pressured and closed out on, you've got to have the ability to get your shoulder by and take that ball to the basket. So two free throws. The first one is good. Fran McCaffrey talked to us the other day about his team and how great it's been that they've had all of their games played. They've been lucky compared mm -hmm. to everybody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said every day and every game is a gift. Yep. He said we were not sure if we would have a season or a game from time to time. He said I applaud our school and the NCAA. It's been a blessing for us. I know a number of other coaches and players feel the same way. It's been hard and bumpy and less than optimal, but we have hoops and high level hoops across the country for the most part as I've been watching games. McCaffrey inside to Garza and Garza is bumps before he went to the basket. They'll get Timmy on that one and it means Garza will go to the free throw line for one and one. Well, that's another way you can start trying to chip away at a deficit is to get the ball inside draw fouls and you've got to convert at the line it works two advantages for you one you can add points and two you slow down the team that wants to really play a free flowing kind of game. Alu will check back in as Timmy has three fouls. And now Garza with 20 points he averages 29.2. And the front end of the one and one is no good. They've, uh, they've missed some, both teams have missed some free throws today that have um, stymied runs. Yeah, I was seven of fifteen from the free throw line. Yeah, that's, that's not going to get it done. Not against the number one team in the country. Nunji back in for the Hawkeyes. Suggs pull up jumper is no good. Rebound by Garza. There's Tucson. He's loved the left side of that lane. Garza takes the air and pass. That'll be goaltending. Ballo will be called for the goaltending. So give the bucket to Luca Garza. And it's now a 14-point game. And I like the attacking mentality of Toussaint. Particularly, you've got the Gitanags in, in the bonus. Well, in the penalty. So you want to put pressure. You don't want to bail them out. Every time you have it, you want to try to probe that paint. And when you score, you can get your defense set and see if you can be disruptive at, at this end. Yeah, Gonzaga, you saw that note. They've missed, uh, the Zags have missed eight of the last nine shots. Umar, you can hear them say, finish, finish, oh, finish. And he does. He was obedient, caught it, and finished. Pretty good footwork by the big fellow mm -hmm. there. Garza got a step, cut off with a double team. Ayayi. Inside, they leave it. For Wies Cap to lay it in. Well, I think there's real fruit to be had on the weak side if Garza can immediately get it out of the double team if he doesn't have a move. The Zags are really overloading to him when he catches it down there. Yeah, because he's such a good passer, too. Yeah, he's just got to look opposite as quickly as possible if he's not going to get into a shot. Uh, yeah, he one handed pass to the opposite side for Cook. Slips it inside. Yeah, he lays it in. There's an example of what Mark Few told us about Ayayi with his ability to make not only good cuts, but well-timed cuts. And that was a perfect example. It's such a great presence to have. Garza reverses his field and lays it in. That is a tough shot. He had a defender and the backboard in his way. Yeah, well, he used the defender's body and the backboard as part of his advantage there. And here come the Zags. They just don't get off the gas pedal. Nope. They just keep that thing on the floor. 81-65. Garza again inside with Timmy on the bench. He is getting.
a chance to work inside. He is 26. Ovalo getting a lesson. <laughs> oh, you can't. He is getting a real lesson from the player of the year in college basketball to this point. Wieskamp with the steal, heading to the basket, had it knocked away by Nemhart. No foul was called, and now a foul is called on the floor. Let's see which way this is going, Tom. There's a lot of thumping and bumping. Okay, that's a good play on the ball there by Nemhart, clearly. Okay, and then there's a little bit of a push by Yai. Maybe he got caught on that. Time out on the floor, 8-11 okay. to play. Here in the second half, 81-67. Up opposite ends of the timeline and experience today. Garza for Iowa has 26. Suggs, the freshman, Garza the senior. Suggs, the freshman, has 24 for the Zags. Yeah, starting again on the big stage is Jalen Suggs, and Garza doing what he's been doing all season long, going back to last year even. And he garnered a few of the um, Player of the Year awards in college basketball. Garza taking a breather with 8-11 to play here in the second half. Fred McCaffrey uh, made it a point to tell us, and we do this, just about his work ethic and uh, his dad, Frank, who's such a big fan, who has become popular on Twitter as well. Uh, Frank said, listen, <laughs> his dad does a great job with him away from the season to get himself trained. Yes for either the upcoming Iowa season or for even beyond mm -hmm. the college game. Exactly. A wonderful foundation laid for this young man, and he's um, another miss there. Good rebound by Nunji. Put back is no good. Nunji trying to get it again. He does. Good possession here if the Hawkeyes can convert. Yeah, Murray in the ball game. He played a little bit in the first half. Connor McCaffrey up top. Shot clock is under 10. McCaffrey lets it fly short. Nunji with the rebound. Tap the buckets. 81 70. We'll get a free throw in just a moment. 7.49 to play here on the Jersey Mike Subs game summary. All right, Clark will Gonzaga had 10 threes in the first half, just one in the second half. Yeah, and you see, Iowa's made a couple, and the advantage has been in the three point game and the fast break points for Gonzaga, but. All things considered, 7.49 to go, and you're at the foul line. The Hawkeyes are in the bonus. Get some stops, attack, and get some scores. It's right, right there. This is the closest they've been. It was a 14-point deficit in half. It's mm -hmm. grown to, did it get as large as 20? Did it 20, get to 20? 20 yeah. Yeah. So now, a little full-court pressure and a different type of game pressure on Gonzaga now. Yeah, Keegan Murray is leading the way. Three-pointer up top is no good. Rebound is run out by Cook. They sweep it underneath for Ayayi, and Ayayi off the glass. No good. Nunji with the rebound. I think he may have gotten a piece of that just a touch. Good luck. Keegan Murray's fouled by Ayayi, so he'll go to the free-throw line. The very talented freshman. Just what you want if you're Iowa. Get some stops, attack quickly, and nothing better than being able to eat into the deficit by knocking down some free throws. It's a 6-0 run for the Hawkeyes. First free throw, no good. Tomorrow, Josh Groban, Miranda Lambert, Megan Trainer, Leslie Odom Jr., and Andrea Bocelli celebrate the greatest gift of the season, family. A home for the holidays tomorrow on CBS. Well, the free throw misses continuing to stifle a bit of the Hawkeyes' momentum. They've left a bunch of cheese at the line today. Yeah, 10 of 20 from the free throw line as Garza checks back in. Yeah, and a couple of those were the front ends of right. one and ones. Trying to add to this run. Iowa is. They need another stop, though. Three possession game. Whistle blows and a foul called against Iowa. That means now that um, Fran is not happy. Well, that means guess. both teams now are over the limit and free throws will be shot both ways. Let's see. Uh, yeah, they got to call that. Yeah, oh, yeah. McCaffrey. Oh, clearly, yeah, you, you could do uh, McCaffrey or is that uh, Nunji as well up okay. there? Yep. So, yeah, you got you to pick them there. You got to give, I mean, freedom of movement. You can't put your hands on a guy trying to make a cut to the rim. 
So now Timmy to the line. He's one for two today. He has 13 points. And he makes the front end. You know, the thing about trying to come back from a big deficit is your margin of error is so thin. You know, you can fight and fight, and all the other team that's been on the lead has to do is come up with a couple of buckets, and they give you the Heisman on your comeback. Mm -hmm. Back to an 11-point game to the free throws today. Wieskamp. Up top to Nunji, back to Toussaint. He's been cutting the basket in the second half. But any time of the shot clock, they go to Garza. Garza turn around, jumper is good. Love it. Little Great turn and face. Beautifully done. And the right time to do it. He went quickly into that move, Tom. No hesitation. 12 of 14 from the four. As Timmy runs down the offensive board, Cook for three. It's good. He's made some big ones today. The transfer from Southern Illinois. No fear there. Great confidence with that shot. Yeah, the turnover. It's going to be Gonzaga basketball with 6.29 to play here in the second half. So the second three pointer of the second half for Gonzaga you know, almost gives them a chance to breathe a little bit. Uh -huh. Another offensive foul there on the screen. I think Timmy guilty. That'll be his four. Yep, four fouls for Timmy. Well, I watch guys, especially the big guys, you don't necessarily, if you just move your feet early, then you don't have to try to do anything extra when you're setting the screen. Your body is big enough. You just got to be a little, well, that wasn't a ton there now that I look at that mm. one. All right, that so was a tough call. Yeah. Clark, he has four. Yep. Uh, Kispert has four, and Watson has four. Could be a factor. That's a walk on Toussaint. So they give it right back with 6.15 to play. Toussaint will check out. Let's see if Jordan Bohannon checks back in. Bohannon will check back in. He does not have a three-pointer today. Yeah, he's really struggled. I mean, other than the North Carolina game where he was 7 of 16, he was 6 of 25 on his other threes. Ball knocked away. Cook, though, will track down the, the deflected basketball. And Bohannon, a 41% yeah. career three-point shooter coming into the season. Hasn't found much daylight here today. Suggs working against Nunji now against Garza. Nemhard for three. No good. Rebound by Garza. That's number nine for him. Garza can shoot it from outside. He's working against Watson, and he forces his way right to the basket. It's overpowered him. <laughs> oh, man. Big time. <laughs> Oh, he is so good and so efficient. That's 30 now for Garza. Not a surprise. Not at all. He averages 29. And then Hart working against Nunji. Bounce pass to Watson. How did he know he was there? He's got great vision. Great feel as well. Covered him when he was at Florida. And he told me his soccer playing as a youngster. Interesting. Helped with his perspective and vision. You know, those games are similar, soccer and basketball. Soccer is basketball without your hands, really. Physical, switching the ball, reversing it. Ball skills required by everybody. Well, his vision's going to find him beyond the three-point line for that attempt, no good. And a pushing foul is going to go against Frederick. This is all that weight room work mm -hmm. that Garza has been doing. There's Watson in pretty good position, and nice job by Garza. He never extended that right arm. He just kept, well, just a touch, but not enough to warrant a foul call. He used it to brace for the contact and then just um, bulldozed himself right to the hoop. And now Watson to the free throw line, and he converts the first one. He'll get a second one. Fred McCaffrey was going over some of what Garza does in his workouts with his dad, running on the beach, things like that. He said, you know, I love Frank. I have a great relationship with him. But I always tell him that he needs a vacation from his vacation sometimes. <laughs> that was a great line. <laughs> well, had it off the glass, no good. Rebound by Suggs. Well, if there's a Zags now, you just want to tread water. Mm -hmm. You don't want to give any momentum to the Hawkeyes. You want to be patient and efficient down here at the offensive end. 
Don't settle. Only quality shots. A little careless pass yeah, that, that time was, by that was settling a little bit. Yeah, clearly. Bohannon well, trying to get free. He does. Murray. Bohannon. Good play. Good ball movement there. And a three-shot foul is going to be called against Suggs, which means Frederick is going to go to the free throw line. Wow. Well, a chance to get it back down to 10 and then get into the full court pressure that has had a little bit of an effect, not much, on Gonzaga, but still plenty of time left for the Hawkeyes to make a late surge. First free throw is good. Gather the family for some holiday fun. Play together on The Price is Right at night, Tuesday at 8, 7 central on CBS. Second of three is good. Try to make this a 10-point game. That's huge. Big. Three straight three, three straight free throws, excuse me. And it's 89-79. The pressure from Iowa. Kispert back in, he has four fouls. Ball knocked away. Lewis picked up by the Hawkeyes. Now let's see if they can get something in transition. Bohannon leading the way with Boy, Murray. You, you find guards if you can. Yep. Got to play through him in the half court. Now working against Watson who has four personal fouls. Bohannon for three. No good. He's just been off the mark today. Yeah. Well, actually all season I mentioned it. Yeah, you're right. Other than the Carolina game, he has really struggled with this three-point shot. Can Luca Garza and the Iowa Hawkeyes make one more run? We'll find out. Brad, Gary, and Jamie are all set for that one. Carter and Rapp are raring to go. <laughs> I know they are. Anton Watson to the free throw line, misses. That's a big miss. Three and a half to play. Let's see what Iowa can do to make it single digits. Garza did not get a touch the last time down. I don't think you make that mistake again if you're Iowa. He's camp finds Bohannon. Bohannon fires three. No good. He's just been off today. Ayayi with the rebound. Here we go in transition. The alley up to Suggs and he can't jam it home. Is that a little too much? He was suspended in air. That mm -hmm. pass got there a little. Either he mistimed his jump or the pass wasn't direct enough. Had a little too much helium under it. Yeah, it'll be Garza who called him. He's called for the foul with Nemhart. Let's see. Take another look. Well, no, that's one he's got to convert. Yeah. Now you look at the replay. It wasn't easy, but it's doable, especially for a guy of his athleticism. Looked like he lost it just a little bit. Didn't quite squeeze it in his palms. And it started to squirt on his fingertips a bit. First free throw, no good. Well, the Zags are allowing um, Iowa to remain hopeful because mm -hmm. they've missed a couple of free throw opportunities. On 60 Minutes tomorrow, what does Pfizer vaccine mean for the pandemic? 60 Minutes talks to the team's key players to find out tomorrow on CBS. All right, I know these guys can't hear me, but perhaps I know Bohan is a great three-point shooter, but let's find Garza this trip. Mm -hmm. He's got it. Face-up jumper. Doesn't get the roll. Wieskamp with the rebound. Count the buckets. That is a big-time offensive board and putback. Well, he's a big-time player. Joe Wieskamp. There's Garza getting a good look. That's a shot he loves to have. And then Wieskamp just chased down the ball. Nobody got a body on him. An offensive rebound to me, Tom, is really pursuing the ball. As Kispert has been Dairy Queen. We'll sit and watch the rest of this one. Yeah, he had a big first half for Gonzaga. Not so much because of foul trouble in the second half. Yeah, his rhythm was disrupted. And another miss and a big rebound there by Nunji. There's a good look for Wieskamp. For three, no good. Deadens off the side of the iron. Well, that's been the story, too. The inability of the Hawkeyes to knock down threes. Yeah, four of 19. Yeah, Clark. and they came in making an average of 12 of 29. But some of that credit you have to give to the Gonzaga Bulldogs, especially in that first half, because there weren't a lot of quality threes to be had. 
I thought the perimeter defense from Gonzaga was really pretty good. And Suggs falls to the floor as he connects on another three-pointer. It's number seven for him. He's got 27, a season high. Got a foul inside the paint. That means that Connor McCaffrey's going to go to the free throw line. Well, it's a tough step back here. But Frederick went too deep on the retreat. Mm -hmm. Had too much ground to cover on the challenge. See the three lines that are on the floor. That's because the uh, Sanford Pentagon has hosted men's, women, the NBA's G League. Mm -hmm. And high school, right? And high school as well. Yeah. They do a lot of stuff there. 500 acre facility. Free throw is good by McCaffrey. They said they kind of had built it 3200 which is less than than this facility but they kind of built it like with Hinkle Fieldhouse mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. campus of Butler and Mines. That old school field yeah. with uh, modern amenities. It's a really nice um, combination. You say that Ayayi went early on that one? That's what it appears. Somebody went early for Gonzaga. So McCaffrey will get another shot. See the stories in the free throw line. That is a big part of the story today. Well, the biggest part of any game really is the rebounding, free throws, and threes, mm -hmm. and turnovers. I mean, you look at those numbers, and typically you can determine who comes out on top. And Gonzaga has had a huge advantage in the three-point game. The, um, the um, turnover game has been comparable. Free throws have been comparable, but rebounding early on was clearly in favor of Gonzaga. I think the Hawkeyes have closed the gap here some in the second half. Try to milk the clock as much as they can. Shot clock at two. No good off the front of the rim and the rebound by the Hawkeyes. Here comes Wieskamp. Wieskamp step back. It's a two. And he does get the friendly roll and bounce. The time is short now. 83-84. Got to start fouling, you think, Clark? Maybe one possession where you try to force a turnover here. You didn't want to do that. No, sure. Three possession game. Ideally, you would have wanted to get a stop, force a mistake, and then come down quickly and then start playing the foul game. Four fouls on Frederick. Free throw is good. Nemhart, he's been solid today. He has 11. Second shot is no good. Loose ball. Garnes has got it. And neither team has distinguished itself from the strike today. Garza with that rebound is a double double. Not really going to matter though as Ayayi is able to slam that one home. Uh, the whistle blows with 51 seconds left. Really impressive showing by the Gonzaga Bulldogs today. Yeah, oh, considering oh, wow. it's, it's that, uh, the layoff. Is that Connor McCaffrey? I think so. 51.2 to play. They deal with McCaffrey. We will be back. Tough challenge that Canelo is taking on. He's him out Canelo Smith. Tonight, live on DAZN. Download the DAZN app. Abby says she wants to marry a B-Dubs honey barbecue wing. We get the sweet, tangy allure of honey barbecue sauce, but you can't marry a chicken wing. What are you going to serve at the wedding? Their family? 26 sauces and seasonings, now with free delivery. Athletic training staff and Fran McCaffrey coming over to take a look at Connor McCaffrey. He is up. It, it almost looks like he got hit in, near the throat area. And you see the contact right there. That yeah, was Watson, I think. May have gotten him with the shoulder. Let's see. Shoulder to the sternum, perhaps. Oh, no, there it is. You saw it right with the elbow, mm. the left elbow. The shoulder got him nipped, and then he was turning to get the ball to the Yayi. 
caught McCaffrey with the left elbow. And an easy bucket for Toussaint as he's able to lay it in. A timeout called by Fran McCaffrey. 47.6 to play, a 10-point game. The number one team in the country had a 20-point lead at one point. It's a 10-point lead. In fact, it's been basically this for the last uh, 10 minutes or so. It's each team with 10 team fouls. The possession hour belongs to Iowa, and the Hawkeyes have one timeout left. I mean, it's only 47.6 to play. Not a lot of runway for the Hawkeyes to try to make a comeback, and Gonzaga is so good offensively, and they've They've shown us that throughout the ball game. They have really controlled this one mm -hmm. from about the six-minute mark of the sec of the first half. As you take a look at historically what's happened when number one and number three have convened, and it's been all number threes winning mm -hmm. until today. Actually, Ohio State, the alma mater, took care of the Badgers as the number <laughs> one team. I had to make sure I noted that one. You didn't note that. <laughs> Friedman's Florida Gators knocked off the Buckeyes. No, no, I missed. I, uh, okay. I got selected. I got selective eyes. Turnover forced. <laughs> Suggs called for the traveling violation. Andy Friedman, our director. Oh, 18 turnovers, a little high for the Zags. And now if you're Iowa, I think you attack and try to get that ball inside. A quick bucket is what you want. You don't have to settle for a three. If you get a quality one, yeah, take it. But you need points. And the best way to do that is to try to get it inside off the dribble pass. Frederick will inbound the, the basketball to Toussaint off the high screen set by Garza. Garza was open for a moment. Toussaint right to the rim. I like it that. In. That's well done. And a timeout called by Iowa. 96-88, 39.9 to play. We will be right back. Back to the game reset. Iowa is now without any timeouts. Fran McCaffrey just used the last one. 39.9 to play. It is Gonzaga basketball. Joe Toussaint has 12 of his 14 in the second half for the Hawkeyes. He's played very well getting the basket and kind of opening some things up. He has done an outstanding job in doing what he does. He penetrates and puts pressure on the defense with his ability to get into the paint. And that was well done by Iowa to go right to the paint knowing Gonzaga doesn't want to foul. Now you've got to be able to force a turnover, and if not, you've got to play the foul game right. immediate. So man-to-man, -man, full court pressure off the inbounds. Nemhart will inbound. It's Cook, Suggs, they're both out there as well. Watson has four fouls, Ayayi. And they get the ball into Nemhart. Now he just runs away from the defense, and they have to foul him at the top of the paint. And Nemhart has not been that great at the line, nor have the Zags overall. So you need some help here if you're Iowa. You need some misses and quick conversions. And then Hart makes the first one. Gonzaga is playing without Kispert and Timmy. Both have fouled out of this game. Significant because Timmy averages 23. Kispert averages 22. But they have so much else, including Nemhart who now gives them a 98-88 lead with 35 seconds left to play. Toussaint into the paint. His runner didn't get the angle. Loose ball. Wieskamp pulls down the rebound. Now to Nunji. Toussaint for three. It's no good. And the rebound by the Zags. It's loose again. And the ball's just squirting around like a, a grape with his seed popping out. Yeah, great hustle by both teams. I'm not sure who's going to end up with possession here. Looks like we're headed the other way. Yeah, Is there a Gonzaga foul committed? Basketball. There was some kind of a, a call by the officials over to the scoreboard, the scores table. And I think it's against Garza. Yep. Now that means Cook's going to go to the free throw line. He's had a solid game off the bench for Gonzaga. That's an impressive overall performance, considering the layoff as well. Mm -hmm. When you think about Gonzaga having not played in two and a half weeks, limited practice time for this group. I tell you, their competitive spirit and talent and love of playing really showed up today. Yeah, they just a really guys, good opponent. Five guys in double digits. They have five that average that, so they were they were themselves, if not optimally. Certainly enough to to win against a um, 
top five team. Nunji's getting his elbow wrapped up. Meanwhile, the floor getting cleaned up. The elbow must have uh, cut open. Now back to the free throw line will go Cook. Gonzaga averaging 93 points per game. On the doorstep of another 100 point game. They had 100 against Kansas. And the second shot is good. 99 88, 13 seconds left to play. And Toussaint, a little hesitation. Garza open for three, and it is no good. Rims out. Loose ball. Toussaint has it. Six seconds left. Toussaint nice it. through the defense, throws it up, swatted away by Watson, and it will remain Iowa basketball with 2.4 left on the game clock. Well, number one is certainly going to do more than survive here this afternoon. The inbounds goes to Garza. Two seconds. Garza steps to his right for three. No good. And that is it. Gonzaga 99, Iowa 88. That's the final score for Clark Kellogg and our entire crew. So long from Sioux Falls. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the 2021 Men's National Championship. We'll send you to Cleveland for game one of the CBS Sports Classic between North Carolina and Kentucky.